G'day guys, today we're gonna to go through uh, the fitment, the tacking, and the complete weld out of this water tank. Now this is the same water tank that we folded up the other day. So it's gonna be a fun process to see how this thing fits together and then completely weld it out. Once she's welded, then we'll go through and we'll hydrostatic test it to make sure there's no leaks. Then we'll polish it and then she's good to go. All right guys, first things first, before we do any welding or any tacking, we need to make sure that we uh, get all of this plastic off. So, let's get into it. All right, one done. Now with this large piece, we don't actually have to take all of the plastic off. Just need to get rid of the plastic where we're gonna be welding. So this is actually a scratch gauge that I've put a piece of copper in and repurposed it. Some of you might be wondering, won't that scratch the stainless? The answer is usually you would, but because copper is softer than stainless, you won't actually scratch the stainless. Do the modification. So if I've just fully peeled all the plastic off that internal baffle, because once everything's assembled, you'll never reach it again. All right. And the reason why I leave plastic on the larger faces is when we move the round, we don't completely scratch and scuff that face. All right, that one's done. One of the reasons why I just don't go and just cut along here and just have like a free ragged line is because it doesn't look overly nice. Just so you guys can know what I'm talking about with that free line, I'll just go along here and see that. Now that's actually a pretty good cut, I must say. Usually with that scratch gauge, you don't get that. Not that I like to do it that way, but she just wants to fight me today. All righty. Now that all this plastic is peeled, and while this part is up here, we're actually going to go through and measure where our internal baffle goes. All right, while we're here, we may as well weld her up. One. Now I'm just gonna go through and fully well atop this cross edge, guys. Just to give it strength. These roller tables are extremely handy with large pieces like this. You can just turn it around and not worry about it. What you guys can also see is I've got a piece of aluminium underneath this, this roller table. That's there so that I don't get any burn through or porosity on the back side. You can see that, that baffle is now in place. Put this to the side for now. And our next job is to weld our water inlet and outlets on the other part. Sometimes these ones that are very, very close are a little bit harder to see or get to. Which means that you also sometimes need to reposition. All right. 
nice and level. Before I go on to the other side though, I always double check them for pinholes. Again, and I'll probably say this about a hundred more times while I'm welding this, because this is holding water, you don't want any pinholes anywhere or else she's gonna leak. Now, even though we do do the hydrostatic testing, it checks for leaks, it's always quicker and easier to pick them up now and fix them before the tank's together. All right, that one looks good. So we'll now go into the other side. Now, usually when I weld, I don't have my tungsten stick out that far, a little bit, a little bit long. But for this, what we're doing, it's okay. When I start doing the long runs along the weld, I will shorten her up. Again, just gonna go through and just check those welds. I couldn't see part of that weld as I was welding it. So it's always good to just double check. All right, now we're on to the assembly. All right. So this is where the fitment comes into play and she can be a little bit finicky. When you go to assemble one of these things, you get one point, that's spot on, one point, and you start from there. It's also good, I always have like a little screwdriver, a little flathead screwdriver, that I can put in there and just pry, just to find, just to fine tune it. Now, I've got no idea which core I'm gonna start with, but, it's more than likely going to be this corner here. Excellent. Is that a bit of a tap? All right, that's our now starting point. So now what I'll do is I'll just go along this edge and just tack it in a few places. I'm not going to go ballistic and tack it every 10 or 15 mil, which we will a bit later on when we go to weld it out. I'm just going to go through and line everything up. Probably going to be easier that way. And I might have to clamp this down. Stay. This is where these little flatheads come in, come into their own, just lining everything up. Like so. Sometimes if it's just a little bit out, you just work your way along and just line everything up nicely. As you can notice guys, there's a lot of finessing of the tank to get it to fit perfectly. If this tank was completely flat without any cross breaks, it'd be very, very easy. It'd just literally go together. But because we've got these cross breaks, you need to give it a bit more strength. It's also got a lot of uh, tension inside of that. There's nothing that we can't handle. Excellent. All right, guys, now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go through and just start tacking every 50 mil all the way around the water tank. And then once that's complete, I'll go through and probably tack every 15 mil or maybe even every 20 mil in between that in preparation to completely weld this thing out.
Now with these tacks, one of the reasons why we tack it is one, to stop distortion as we're welding to get the waves, but two, you can go through and just tap it and maneuver or move the actual two pieces together and you can move the joint around. Now you guys, you can probably see along this edge here that this top part, the raw red is actually sitting just before the actual roll. It's actually designed like that. So when we're actually welding, when we're welding and I'm actually rolling it in, it actually rolls into that corner and just makes it and finishes that weld off real nicely. All right guys, now that we've tacked it every 50 to 100 mil. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna get a new tungsten, because that one, as you saw, I uh, hit the stainless twice on that one. But now I'm gonna go through and actually tie tack all of these. And then I'm gonna measure 50 mil increments all the way around. Uh, and that'll actually give me my weld lengths when I come to weld this tank. Instead of showing you another 10 minutes of tight tacking the water tank, I thought we'd skip straight to this time lapse of a full well down. As you can see here, I'm working on this bad boy section by section, changing up sides and location as we move along. This is so the heat is evenly dispersed and is not concentrated in one area, which would cause warping and distortion of the sheets. Now, you're probably thinking this is obviously sped up, but this is actually how fast I weld in real time when I've had my wheat bix for breakfast. All right, guys, that's the last weld. Now, we're gonna let this tank sit and cool down for approximately an hour, hour and a half. That way the air in the inside of the tank is at room temperature. Then we'll go through and um, hydrostatic test it, make sure there's no leaks. Once that's complete, then we'll go through and we will polish all the welds and choose a finished water tank. All right guys, and there you have it. That's how we manufacture our water tanks. If you'd like to see a video of us doing our hydrostatic testing, leave some comments below. Check out that video next week, guys. Cheers. Testing one, four, 12. Whoa. Zappity zappity, I'm awake. Did you get that on camera? That's a blooper. Yeah? <laughs>